Imagine a world in which there is no gender or sex. There are only people. In this world, people are able to choose their own lives freely, 100% freely. Free from expectations about gender roles, free from expectations about sex roles. This world is an ideal world, but it is also too simple. Humans are very complex. Each of us has feelings, needs, wants, hopes, fears, strengths and weaknesses. We choose our lives because of these feelings. Well, ideally, we should be able to choose our lives like that. But, at the same time, other people want and need to make their own lives. Because we live together, other people's needs and wants affect our choices. The question that helps us understand gender and sex issues is how do our gender and sex and our sex affect our life choices? In an ideal world, people should be 100% free to choose their lives. But if other people have beliefs about our gender and our sex, our choices become smaller. Sometimes those choices become bad. And sometimes people, by themselves, do not realise that they are hurting themselves because they believe other people's ideas. So, a key part of studying gender and sex is to see what those choices can be and what those choices actually are. We need to have three tools to help us. These tools are a good definition of gender, a good definition of sex, and a baseline from which we can measure actual choices. Let's look at these words briefly. Before I start, please understand that the definitions are simple. But how they are actually understood is very complex. Gender. The UK government define gender as the socially constructed characteristics of women and men. I will show the meaning of social construction in my own lecture later in this course in detail. For now, you can understand it as people create and change the meanings of our words. It also means that people who have power often use words to control less powerful people. I hope that you can see how dangerous this is, especially in terms of gender and sex. Sex. The UK government defines sex as the biological aspects of an individual as determined by their anatomy. Sex, then, is physical. Baseline. This is my word. I use it to show the starting point. My baseline is that there is no gender or sex. From this baseline, we add things to see how the actual condition changes from the baseline. The definitions of gender and sex seem easy enough. But there are a lot of places where these definitions don't work. For example, one person in about 1,500 is born intersex. This means that their sex contains aspects that are both male and female. In our ideal world, this does not matter. Everyone is equal. But in our real world, it matters a lot. And for gender, there are so many arguments about definitions. Men and gender. When people think of gender and sex studies, usually people think about women's studies. This is unfortunate for at least two reasons. The first reason is that both men and women need to know about the issues. Since the first wave of feminism in the 17th century until now, it has mainly been women who have pointed out the gender and sex problems. 
and usually the people making the problems were men. So, if this is true, men more than women need to learn about gender and sex issues. I think that this is true. The second reason that it is unfortunate that gender and sex is usually about women issues is because it doesn't consider men's issues. This is because of historical reasons. The word feminist is well known. In the first wave of feminism, feminists fought for women to be seen, to be understood, to be accepted as members of society. In the second wave, feminists fought for equality in law, education, health, politics and so on. Please understand something hidden in these two waves. The meanings of female and women were decided mainly by men. The social roles for women were created by men. Expectations about women also were from men. In the third wave of feminism, women fought to change these definitions. The meaning of woman should be something that women themselves create. I fully agree. But feminism really shouldn't exist. If all humans treated each other equally, fully and with deep respect, we would have humanism. Humanism means that each human should be allowed to grow into the person they can be and want to be. Until that happens, we need to be feminists, even men. But this misses some very important issues that actually do face men in the real world every day. Gender problems are not 100% done by men to women. Sexual assault is not only done by men on women. Laws are not only unfair to women and support men. There are many examples of issues that truly affect men. Let me give some examples. Now, these are from English-speaking countries, but there are also many examples in Japan. In Scotland, men wear kilts. These are similar to skirts, but traditionally men do not wear underpants under kilts. A bagpipe player from Scotland, Willie Armstrong, told the BBC in 2020 that many women take photos or video from under his kilt. This happens every week. In groups, the women laugh and think that taking the photo is a joke. It's funny. This is called upskirting and there is a law against it. This law has only been used against men, not women who do it. Willie Armstrong has become used to this bad behaviour. He does not like it, of course. However, it is sexist, illegal and wrong. Yet most people do not think that it is serious. Domestic violence is a terrible thing. The Guardian showed that in more than 40% of domestic violence cases, men are the victims. Someone may say, women are smaller so domestic violence against women is more serious. This opinion is wrong. Any and all domestic violence is wrong. Are men supposed to stay quiet? The American news organisation NPR reported that one in seven men experience severe domestic violence, yet help is very difficult to find. There are many other issues that affect men. I believe that in our work towards humanism, we need to think about women's issues and men's issues. Gender and sex involve all humans, not just women. 